Hi, this is Shayla with Whole Motherhood, and you are listening to Moms Learning with Moms. Today we have Kim with us, and I'm really excited about Kim's story. It's really amazing. Kim works with my husband, and I remember when he came home one day from work um, several years ago and, and told us a bit about Kim and what she was going through. And so I've seen it kind of from far away these last several years, and it's really just an amazing story we're going to hear about today. And so we'll turn that time over to Kim and, and just have her tell us what happened several years ago at the beginning. Okay, well, um, back in December of 2015, I had found a small lump on my breast. It was smaller than the size of a pea. I didn't think much of it. I had had one once before, um, and it turned out to be nothing. So I kind of put it off for a couple of months um, and finally went in and got my mammogram. And then after the mammogram, they wanted to do a needle biopsy. Um, but all this time, I still didn't think it was anything to worry about. And then in February, I found out that I had breast cancer. It was invasive lobular carcinoma. It was, um, they thought maybe a stage two at that point. They said, you know, it's small. My mammogram the year before had been clear and um, they figured it would probably be a pretty easy treatment. It was a, a common and good kind of cancer to have, if you can say that. Um, so within two days, I was meeting with my oncologist. Um, they decided that we would do a lumpectomy to see you know, um, if it was spread beyond the lump or not. So I did that a couple of weeks later and unfortunately um, they found no clear margins. So the, they took out not only the lump, but all the area around it and um, cancer had spread throughout it. So mm. they upgraded me to a stage three and they also found out it was in my lymph nodes system. They had removed 15 lymph nodes and it was in like 13 or 14 of the lymph nodes. So we knew at that point that we were dealing with something a little more serious than we had anticipated at the beginning. Besides the lump, were there any other symptoms that that would have led you to any clue that, that was going to happen? No, none at all. And like I said, you know, my mammogram had been clear the year before. There was no history of breast cancer in my family. So it was, you know, kind of an unexpected um, thing to happen to get that news. What was the prognosis on at that point? Uh, they were still pretty positive. They figured, um, you know, chemo and radiation would be needed and surgery. But, you know, they kept telling me that I was young and healthy, that it would, you know, there was a good prognosis. So I um, started treatment pretty quickly. I, I had to deal with some lymphedema first because when they removed the lymph nodes, um, it causes your body not to be able to drain and, and process the fluids in your body than it normally does. So since they had taken them out under from my right arm, it meant that the lymph nodes on that side no longer could work. And so I ended up with what they call cording, where like the, the passages that the fluid goes through all harden um, because they can no longer push it through. And so I would have to go into physical therapy and the physical therapist would actually work on those cords and break them up. And you could actually hear them snap as they put pressure on them to break them up. Um, but the process also helped because it kept my arm from being swollen all the time and stuff. I did have to wear some pressure um, sleeves and stuff like that for a while to help with the swelling. But after they worked with me in physical therapy, then I at least got, kind of got over that symptom that I didn't have to um, wear the sleeve and, anymore. I also had to put a machine on at night that would put pressure on my body and kind of help work the fluids mm. through my body until my body learned how to do it on its own. Um, but then after a few months of that, I was able to quit with the machine as well. But then I had to have a, a mastectomy in April and decided to go ahead and do a bilateral because they said it could come back on my other breast. So I just figured we'll just take them both off at the same time and not have to go through another surgery or concern and worry about that down the road. Hmm. So um, that was a pretty tough surgery. They you know, removed both my breasts. It took a while to heal. You have drains that 
are annoying and make it hard to sleep and hard to do things. But eventually um, that healed. And then within six weeks, I was able to wear some prosthetics. So I felt a little bit more like myself again. Um, and then I had to do chemo. I did six rounds of that um, once every three weeks. Um, they pump you full of steroids and anti-nausea medicine and things like that. So I actually did pretty good with um, the chemo, um, other than you know all the side effects like fatigue and insomnia and joint pain. And my nails would peel and I would deal with hot flashes and uh, weakness and stuff. Um, and then I... Um, Oh, I lost my hair at, after my second round of chemo, it started just like falling out in clumps. And so I decided to go ahead and, and shave my head at that point. And it may sound weird, but that's probably one of the hardest things I went through, I think, mm -hmm. because um, hair is part of your identity. You know, when you describe someone, you usually say, oh yeah, they've got short brown hair or, you know, long blonde hair. And so, you know, I didn't feel like me and... Um, that was tough and it was summertime. So I'm trying to wear, you know, wigs or scarves in summer and it was just hot and kind of miserable. Um, but, you know, it eventually grew back and that's all good. Um, <laughs> then I did radiation. I did six weeks of that. I went five days a week for six weeks every day, had to go in and do the radiation. And that kind of gives you like a sunburn and it itches and gives, um, you have fatigue and stuff that you deal with. So um, I was dealing with that and still working every day and eventually, wow. you know, was done with that and, and can kind of, you know, return to normal life a little bit. Is there any, I guess, mental health problems with it? Like, was there depression with that or anxiety or? Um, I mean, I think I was a little anxious about anything that was new just because I didn't know what to expect, but I really felt like I was blessed with the doctors and nurses and everyone I had. I feel like I had some of the best and everyone was very encouraging and they were good about explaining things. And if they didn't, I would ask questions. I would go into every appointment, usually with a list of questions I had for the doctor. Um, and I would also record my doctor visits because you are usually absorbing just, you know, this tons of information and words that you're not familiar with. So it was just easier for me to record it so that if I didn't remember something or understand something, you know, I could listen to it and look up information or just even, you know, oh, what was it he said again? And, and you know, just have all that information handy because it's, it's a lot. There's a lot of terms and medications and stuff that they tell you about and you just feel like you're drinking from a fire hose. So um, I just found that to be helpful. Well, what happened after that? I actually got reconstruction surgery. Um, I had a great doctor for that as well. They were able to do what they call a deep flap reconstruction. Um, so I went in for the first part of that, like around May, and they actually um, cut me from hip to hip. They take out this big, like football shaped section of my stomach and then use that to, to reconstruct my breast. So it's all, you know, natural tissue. Um, but it was a, quite the recovery. I mm -hmm. felt like I walked hunched over for a month or more just because, you know, with all that, um, stitches across the stomach and in the chest, you hurt, you don't realize how much you use your stomach for everything, you know, even just sitting. And so, um, it was, it was kind of a painful, difficult recovery, but I'm really glad I did it. Um. And what are the other options, Kim? You can get implants. You can do nothing. You can wear prosthetics. Um, so, and, and they, they have other surgeries where they can actually take part of the muscle from your back and stuff. But I've heard that that can be really difficult to recover from. So, um, what are some of the advantages of this surgery then that you have felt? I guess I like it because it's all me, you know, it's my tissue. It, feels more natural, you know, yeah. I would do it again. And I did have to go back and I had to do like a second reconstruction after everything kind of heals, I go back and kind of do some adjustments. And so I did have a second, second part to that reconstruction, but everything mm -hmm. has healed well. It's been, you know, a, a good experience and I'm glad I did it. 
That's amazing. I've never even heard of that. That's incredible that they can do that. Yeah. Well, what's next part of the story? <laughs> um, well, usually if you hit five years after um, you've had cancer, that's a pretty good indicator. It's not going to come back. The 10 year mark is really the big one because they put me on medication, you know, try to keep the cancer at bay. Um, but then it also causes all these side effects. So then you take medication to deal with the side effects from the medication. Um, but I had hit about, I was almost at my five-year mark um, when I had some chest pain, thought maybe it was my heart. It was on my left side. It was right under my breast. And I thought, oh, you know, maybe this is a heart issue. The pain was getting worse. And so I, I really couldn't put it off anymore. And my husband was like, we're taking you to the ER. Um, so we went into the ER, they did some x-rays, they did an MRI. And when they came back, they said, well, it's a broken rib, but it's because you have cancer spread throughout your bones. So the cancer had come back without us realizing it um, and had spread and weakened my bones. It's all through my spine. It's basically all over. Um, so I was back to see my oncologist within two days. They scheduled a PET scan and that came back. That was like three weeks later. And they said it was stage four terminal incurable cancer and gave me one to three years. Um, so it was quite a shock because I, I had been feeling fine prior to this. I didn't recognize that there was anything going on with my body. I had been seeing my oncologist every three months doing blood work. They were looking at my cancer markers. They were, you know, checking things and everything had looked fine. Um, come to find out my cancer markers didn't elevate when my cancer came back, which I guess can happen sometimes. Um, it's not common, but it is a, a situation that, you know, they told me that that does happen sometimes. So mm -hmm. my cancer had probably been growing for a while um, and we just didn't realize it. So, um, I ended up doing a bone marrow biopsy and got the results back from that. And it seemed to be more hormone driven than they originally thought. So um, I had a virtual visit with the Mayo Clinic doctor to get like a second opinion. And after um, he looked at all the tests and stuff that we had done, he said that he thought I probably had more like three to five years to live, which you know made me happy. But I also know it's just a number and you know, they're just making their best guess. Um, so I started treatment right away. In the meantime, I broke two more ribs because my, my bones were so fragile. Um, so they put me on a bone strengthener. They put me on chemo pills and they put me on um, an iron shot and also um, estrogen receptor, I think it was. So I was getting three injections plus taking chemo pills and um, the Mayo Clinic doctor agreed that that was the best treatment, that I was on the best meds that I could be, um, but I ended up having some issues with the chemo pills. They had to change the dose like three times. We finally went down to the very lowest dosage that they have, and I was supposed to be on it for three weeks and off a week um, every month, and my liver was not happy with the chemo medicine, and so they had to kind of keep a real close eye on my liver and we ended up doing two weeks on and two weeks off because that was about all my body could handle. And even in that time, my um, liver can get affected a little bit by it. And also it really affects my white blood cell count and my immune system. So they're really good about monitoring me and kind of keeping an eye on things. And they you know, have to make adjustments occasionally or keep me off it a little bit longer so that I can kind of recover before we go back on it. And so they'll just keep me on this treatment as long as possible. They said eventually the eye brands, which is the chemo pills, will quit working, um, that your body can only usually um, handle it for a couple of years at the most, and then it doesn't work, and then they go to another drug. Um, the only problem with mine is the other drugs tend to have known liver issues, so they're not sure if those will work for me or not. Um, but in the meantime, they, you know, they just decided to continue this treatment. And then when I went back 
for a PET scan in uh, this past spring, miraculous, miraculously, um, I was in remission. And we're not even sure how that happened because it didn't seem like a possibility. I mean, my cancer is still considered stage four incurable. Um, but Heavenly Father really blessed us and I will take the remission as long as he allows me to have it and you know, just try to, to live the best I can in that time. And when it comes back, we'll deal with it at that time. The timeline of all of this, you, you had breast cancer in 2017, you said? 16. 2016. And then this, this bone cancer was, the, when was that diagnosed? The June of last year. June of last year. And so what does remission mean, Kim? Like when you say you're in remission? It means there's no cancer showing up in my body right now. Um, and, even, and when the doctor came in and told me that, um, I'm sure my mouth dropped open. <laughs> Um, cause like I said, I didn't think that was even possible with, you know, how spread it was throughout my bones and everything, but he said, you know, if there's any there, it's too small to be picked up on the scans. Um, we'll call this a win and, you know, just keep an eye on things. So mm-hmm. I even checked the PET scan results after he handed them to me to make sure that it was my name on the, on the results that, you know, he'd gotten it right and had mixed me up with someone else <laughs> considered no cancer in my body at this time. Does that change at all what your plans were going to be these next several years? I don't know that it changes a lot because we know that chances are it's going to come back. I just feel like it gave us this little reprieve and that we would enjoy life as much as we can right now. I went on a cruise with my daughter. Um, My husband and I went on a trip. You know, we're just trying to enjoy life. Um, my goal is to enjoy the journey and to live intentionally and you know spend time with people and things that are important and i i have found it to be a blessing almost to know that i'm terminal because i think it's real easy for us to put things off or to focus on things that aren't really important or just get distracted by life and so For me, it helped me to just kind of refocus on those things that were really important to me. Um, I've become an an avid journal keeper now. I want to, you know, to leave things behind for my family. I do scrapbooking every week because I figure if I don't preserve those pictures and memories, you know, no one else in my family is going to do it. And I want to leave that uh, legacy behind for my family so that they can remember the good times and the things that we've done and Um, even, you know, how I felt about things as I, you know, make notes in my, my scrapbook on different events and stuff that I I feel like I'm giving them a piece of myself that I want them to be able to have later on. With with the chemo pills, did you have hair loss again? I don't remember. Yeah. Uh, Um, within, within two weeks, uh, I mean, within the second treatment, it was, it was coming out in clumps. We had a kind of a family I don't know if you want to call it a celebration, but we had gathered a bunch of family and my kids all helped shave my head. And, oh. you know, I wore a wig sometimes. I'd wear scarves and things like that. And that was, yeah, that was tough. It was, was it harder the, the second time or? Um, I, I didn't lose it the second time around. This, oh. this time it's, it's gotten thinner. Um, you know, I, I can tell a difference and I've got side effects that come along with the the medications, you know, like my nails peel and break real easy. I am fatigued almost all the time. I have insomnia, Mm. um, you know, sometimes stomach issues and joint pain and things like that. But, you know, you can put up with a lot of things when you know that it's, it's what's keeping you alive. So. Mm. So are you still on a lot of those medications still then? Yep. Nothing has changed in, in what I was what I was taking, they just going to keep the same treatment because it's working. And so they were like, we'll just keep doing this as long as it continues to work for you. That's amazing. Um, Kim, is there anything you could share with anybody who is going through cancer that you feel like would be helpful? It always helps to have someone there with you if you go to appointments and things like that, um, because you will feel overwhelmed and 
Um, I have what I call my cancer notebook. I had one first time around and I have another one this time that kept all my information in. Uh, you'll forget a lot of things or when certain things, you know, happen. So I would just keep a list in it of, you know, doctor's appointments and procedures and surgeries, and then kept all my contact information for all my doctors that if way, if my husband needed it for some reason, it was all together. Um, I would always ask a lot of questions. Um, don't be afraid to do that. And like I said, don't, I mean, if you want to record it, record it because you won't remember everything when you leave an appointment. So it's, it's good to, to have that um, mm. reminder later. Um, and just rely on the Lord. I mean, that's what's gotten me through it. I know he has a plan for me. And when I first, you know, heard the C word, you automatically think you're going to die and you know how awful that's going to be. But as I have dealt with it, my focus has been, you know, this is a short life and I know I'll be with my family for eternity. So if I keep that focus, it makes it easier. And, you know, just be willing to accept help and ask for help, uh, rely on the Lord and blessings and prayer. You know, try try not to worry. I know that's, that's hard to do, but I think worry can make us feel negative and it makes it harder. So I found it was always better to focus on positive things, um, help people when you can so that you're serving others and it takes the focus off of you and what you're going through. Life is short, so just enjoy enjoy every minute of it. I love that, Kim. Thank you so much. I really wanted to hear your story, and so I'm glad you were willing to share it. Like, I, I see your touch from kind of afar sometimes with with David and, and working with him and how you're helpful, but also it's interesting that your name comes up in ward conversations just in, in the church and and just the good and inspiring person that, that you are. So thank you. Thank you. I couldn't do it without the support I've had and you know, without the Lord being there with me every step of the way. I love it. We are going to sign off for today and encourage you all to just keep learning and we'll see you next time.